What up, this is Rama Screen, and in the anticipation of FX new series, Why the Last Man, which premieres September 13, I'm here talking with the score composer of this new show, Hertis Stefantotis. How are you, Hertis? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, good, good. Uh, so let me start with the obvious question here. Uh, prior to getting this gig, were you familiar with Brian Vaughn's comic book, Why the Last Man? And... In the process of composing the score, did you go to the comic book to draw some inspiration or did you go mostly go by just by the show alone? Um, I had never heard of it before getting hired in my life. So it was a totally new thing. Uh, and just uh, after I got hired, my boyfriend actually gave me the uh, five books of the comic series. Hmm. So it was uh, I definitely checked them out and, and read through them as, as inspiration before so, even seeing the show. Oh, before you, you even saw the show. Okay, so... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Excellent. Uh, so let me ask you, um, before we dive into your score, um, in your opinion, how, how far different or similar the show is compared to the comic books? Uh, I mean, I haven't read all of them, so uh, I can't really answer that question, but um, it's different, I think. And I think they're also like, I mean, there are some new angles that uh, Eli, the showrunner and, and the writers of the show are, are definitely kind of moving it into the, yeah, our, our times today. Okay, uh, let me ask you, there's a lot of uh, post-apocalyptic shows out there, right? Oftentimes they throw exactly. in vampires, yeah. they throw zombies in there, sometimes they throw robot uprising in there. Uh, but what do you think, in your honest opinion, what do you think makes Why the Last Man a unique post-apocalyptic show? What do you think is special about this story that tackles chromosome and gender diversity? Um. I mean, in the end, it isn't like, a sh the show isn't really about the apocalypse. It's about a new world that is forming uh, a world that has, you know, only only women or, or people that don't have the, the Y chromosome that um, eventually just have to build a new identity and find a new identity in a world that is, has fallen and has been built on, on patriarchy, a world with men. Cool. So let's dive deep now into your score uh, for Why the Last Man. Um, I read on the press note that you wrote what's called a Requiem for the Lost Men, where you imagine a collective cry of every female voice in the world lamenting the loss of their male loved ones. And so you channel that loss into your music and the main title for this series. Please elaborate on that. Help me understand what that means and how that really worked exactly. Um, yeah, so just one like... I, I read the script, started with uh, reading the scripts and, and reading reading the graphic novel. And then I got to see the first or like a rough cut of the first couple of episodes. And I mean, initially, like the beginning of the apocalypse is when shit happens and it's it's pretty brutal. I mean, it's it's kind of fucked up with mm -hmm. with half of humankind just dying. And I. I think when I was starting the idea of the score, I wanted to capture the initial emotion, the moment of it happening, the chaos and the despair and the horror of it. So I wanted to start to write a theme that would kind of almost be like, you know, a tribute to, to, the, to the one scorn, to the, to the fallen man. And I was trying to imagine, you know, because it is an, uh, an apocalyptic show that is set in another world, a fictional world that doesn't exist, but could absolutely happen. Like there's, there's nothing unrealistic about the events that happen uh, in the show. And I was thinking, you know, what is the sound of this world? Um, and I didn't feel that it would be something really futuristic or something that would bring us into this kind of sci-fi thing, but um, I kind of just heard and felt in the moment of everything happening, I just heard all the women. So that, that came my idea of just kind of trying to build the score and build the music on the, on the frequency of the female voice. And you also traveled to your 
uh, homeland Iceland to record some of the sounds and voices that you also wanted to be part of the score for this show. Is that correct? Yeah, I was. Uh, I'm living in Iceland and started this like in you know with COVID, you know our own kind of <laughs> apocalyptic state. Um, and so yeah, I went up north to the northern part of Iceland where there's actually a really cool film orchestra that is like recording in the middle uh, middle of nowhere and they have a couple of great professional choirs um, so I recorded with uh, 10 women in the north and asked them to do all these strange things and they just totally nailed it it was really cool I always it's ask nice. composers <laughs> this question and I'm going to ask you the same thing um, what are the musical instruments that you incorporated for your score for Why the Last Man? Because I imagine Yorick, a lone traveler in the post-apocalyptic world would be mostly accompanied by a sombering tunes of the piano, right? Or did you take a route that's more experimental or unconventional as far as instruments go? Um, oh my God, it's so much. Um, kind of the centerpiece of the score is female vocals mm -hmm. that I sample and process and, and do a lot of, uh, things with. Uh, I recorded a very special instrument that uh, my Icelandic friend made, and there's only three of them that exist in the world. It's called the magnetic harp. Hmm. And it's a, an electroacoustic harp that um, creates like a beautiful resonance. And it's, yeah, somewhere between like, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to explain, but it's a, it's a very, very beautiful sound. So I recorded that instrument. Um, I recorded lots of electronics, synths and, and modular and, and sound stuff. Uh, I did record piano. I, I recorded strings, um, drums, guitars. I mean, there are so many worlds within the score and each of them have kind of their own sound thing. But actually Yorick's, Yorick's theme isn't, isn't sad. I kind of decided to take the approach of hmm. Yorick kind of being someone that carries some kind of hope or like a, like a naive vision because I felt like for me, like how I read the story was that Yorick is, um, in the end kind of driven by his hope of finding his love or finding Beth. So he's kind of seeing this world through through rose colored glasses and then in the middle of the chaos and everything, um, I feel like Yorick is an optimistic character. Oh, I love that. Electro harp, that sounds so awesome. Now, um, even though the writer of the comic book, uh, Brian Vaughn is male, but many of the people working on this project behind the cameras and in front of the cameras are majority women, including yourself. How does it feel for you to be in the company of these women working on bringing Why the Last Man to life? It's honestly been a really amazing experience. I have never ever experienced before being on Zoom meetings, which is entirely women and they're women in the sound department mixing the show doing the camera work, cinematography, editors. I mean, it's to be honest, really inspiring because this it has been, and as like a, a, a woman that is, you know, kind of recently come into the, into the film world and the film scoring, um, I have most of the time worked with way more male men than women. So it's been really inspiring and cool. To, to see women in all these positions. I'm sure, I'm sure it is. Uh, Hollywood has been blessed with several talented Icelandic score composers over the years, including the late great Johan Johansson, whose music for Sicario was uh, one of my favorites, and also Oscar winner Hildur Gunnatir, I hope I pronounced that correctly, who mm -hmm. I actually met in person in, uh, she won Oscar for Joker, which was a phenomenal yeah. music. Um, so what does it mean to you what does it mean for you to be standing on the shoulders of these Icelandic giants like Johan and Hildur? What is the responsibility that comes with that? Um, I don't. I don't know. I, I. I think it's really awesome that Iceland, such a small country, has 
two of these composers that have, have like a remarkable contribution, I think, uh, to film scores. I think both of them have kind of put a big mark on this world and brought something uh, to it to show people that you can uh, go outside of the frame and do something completely different and it can still be a great film score for, for in the end, a very, very commercial product that appeals to a lot of people. So I think it's mostly just inspiring uh, to, to have that. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, finally, um, now that this show is uh, happening next week and uh, this, it, it's arriving, uh, what's next on your horizon? What are you working on next for us? Um, I am working on my own music which I don't have a lot of time for because I have been very busy the past three years in film scoring, but I'm hoping um, to start releasing maybe in November, maybe do a little show. Mm. So that's my own stuff. And then I am also doing a new score that will come out. Uh, actually, a couple of scores. Sorry, I'm so, so lost in work. <laughs> uh, an Icelandic TV series that mm. is premiering in, in Christmas and uh, a British production that will come out next year. Definitely looking forward to those. Oh, I forgot uh, another Icelandic talent. That's my favorite, uh, Balthazar Kormakur. Uh, oh yeah. Wonderful, wonderful filmmaker. And so for my fans at home, everybody go check out Why the Last Man arriving September 13th on FX. Hertis, thank you so much for talking to me and congratulations. Thank you so much.